Today, we're going to assemble a new desktop computer. This is a Cooler Master case. I've gone ahead and unpacked all the parts so that you don't have to sit here for 20 minutes watching me just take things out of boxes and cut plastic. One thing I have not done is remove this yet. This is a twist tie, which we don't need. Zip ties, screws, shock mount washers. We may use none of these. Silica gel, always handy for nothing. You'll probably just throw it away. We have tons and tons of wires. So it looks like this is our front panel header. That's a uh, that's not one header, that's a lot of little headers. Whatever, we'll make it work. USB 3 header. Uh, let's see. We have this fan is going to be in our way for sure. Um, this is USB 2. And high definition audio. Alright. And none of it wants to stay out of the way. Alright. <clears throat> Let's build this godforsaken computer. <sighs> you need these posts. They go wherever the holes on the board are. So, you need the board. You need to figure out where all the things go. I actually just noticed I need more posts. So, let's get more posts. Okay. Use the board as a template of sorts to figure out where all the posts go. Post driver. This computer came with a little Phillips head converter, but I don't want to use that because I'm weird. I'm going to go ahead and get all these posts started. The holes have been painted, and this whole thing is painted black. Since it's been painted, it's going to be very difficult for me to screw anything in by hand for more than the beginning of the thread. So, get it going a little bit. Remember, if there's any resistance, you need to stop and find out why instead of just trying to force everything through. But, once you cut through the paint, it's pretty straightforward. You want to get these posts snug, plus a little bit tighter. But if you turn them too hard, they will literally snap in half. And oh, glad I didn't trust that. They don't always tighten them enough at the factory. If a post snaps in half, you may end up with a bad day. A very, very bad day. fast can we get this done? Okay. Luckily, I've already unpacked all this stuff. Let's go ahead and get the power supply in because it goes at the bottom and everything else kind of relies on that. Line the holes up. Most cases actually come with both mounting directions now, but there's a filter in the bottom of this case. So we'll point the fan, huge fan, towards the bottom of the case. And this one comes with a ton of thumb screws, so I'm just going to use the thumb screws for convenience. Oh, assuming I can get them in at all. Once you get one in, everything else is usually easier. So then things won't move quite as bad. This one really doesn't want to accept a screw. Hang on. What is going on? I might have to actually cut that one in with a Phillips head screwdriver. Yeah, there's paint in the holes because the 
power supply is metal and painted. Yeah, once the paint's out of the thread, it'll go in a lot easier. There are four of these, and all of them require this ridiculous paint thing to be taken care of. How horribly unfortunate this whole mess is. I always think it's insane when there are thumb screws that have to be removed with a screwdriver. And this one doesn't want to mount at all. That's terrible. Loosen everything. If you ever have a situation where the holes don't line up, loosen everything and get it to line up. Oh, so it just doesn't line up, period. Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah, this isn't lining up, so I might have to do this in a more difficult way. Yeah, it won't line up. This case and power supply and the thread holes are ever so slightly not right here. There we go. Sorry, you can't see this. Power supply installed. Next up, motherboard needs to go in. But before we put this motherboard in, we need to install the CPU. So, take it out. Match up the corner. Lift the lever. Let it drop into the hole. Make sure it seats, but don't push it. Heat sink. Where is our CPU fan? There it is. So let's let's put it on the opposite side just so that the lever is a little easier to reach. Yeah. go on this clip and yeah I'm having a little trouble with this clip it doesn't want to come down come on don't be stubborn there we go pull it so that it puts tension down this needs to go to that CPU fan header let's wrap it around underneath the heat sink so that it stays out of the way for the remainder of the job we have two memory sticks. Let's get them installed. And I'll set the packaging aside. Match the colors here, because that usually means that they are specific channels. Match the protect notches. This is backwards. Push evenly until the levers click together on their own. You shouldn't have to touch them. Okay, the board needs to go in. Let's get it over here. And the board's gonna need to go in, but we're missing one more thing. The IO shield, which is sharp and can cut through its own packaging. Make sure any tabs that will cover ports up if you don't move them out of the way, get moved up and out of the way. This one has one. And the I.O. shield goes in the back. It's a little tricky to get them in, but you should see it sticking out the same amount in, on all four sides. I.O. shield in place. Let's put this enormous motherboard in. Always put it in diagonal with the ports going down first. There's not a lot of room to work with, so... 
Get everything to line up, and they're through the holes in the back of the case, and they're actually sitting on these studs right here. Motherboard's going to need to be screwed down. Let's go ahead and do that too. We have a lot of screws, and actually I might want to put bigger ones in than this. Do we have bigger ones? I don't think we do. Eh, we don't have bigger screws. Well, that's all right. This magnetic screwdriver has pretty weak magnetism. So even though I don't like to use a smaller screwdriver than the biggest that'll fit, the smaller one is more magnetic and will help me position everything appropriately. So I'm going to get a screw in. I'm not going to tighten it because we want to make sure that Everything lines up, and it can be very tricky sometimes to get everything to line up. If you tighten the screw, then the board will not pivot ever so slightly to make things match up as you add more screws. Get all the screws in loosely and then tighten them later. This board has more SATA ports than I ever would have guessed. I wasn't paying a lot of attention because I really only need three and it's actually kind of rare these days to find a board with only two SATA ports when you're looking for micro ATX boards. So, uh oh, this is stuck. Oh, it's not stuck, I'm just going insane. That one's going to be real hard to get in. Yeah, it doesn't want to go. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that one to go in, but I may have to either use one of the fine thread thumb screws that came with it or skip it, depending on how much trouble it gives me because I'm not willing to mess around with it. Well, that's, that's not working out too well. Maybe the big one will have a better, a little better lock. It seems to be catching the threads the wrong way. I'm just going to skip it. I'm going to use one of these thumb screws. They have these spiffy fine thread thumb screws. So I'm just going to use one of those and hope it doesn't block the DVD drive. Speaking of which, DVD drive find out will it block the DVD drive I don't think it will okay <clears throat> all right we have this bracket that lets us fit multiple two and a half inch drives and that's what we're going to do with it hard drive we got a one terabyte hard drive which we'll put in one side always put the connectors towards the handle and it'll clip into place this is a byte cc bracket that I really like to use because of this. Get the solid state drive, which also clicks into place. And you've got two hard drives that'll go in one spot. Speaking of which, it won't go in that one spot. 
unless we take all the screws out and remove the cage or do acrobatics with all the stuff. Oh, got to stop. Package coming. Okay. So I realized as I continued getting interrupted while I was trying to show you these things that it would probably be a lot easier if I just showed you what it looks like when it's done and pointed some things out. So here it is when it's done. Accessory power connector. You've got your main power connector here. You've got your optical drive. There's two screws here. There's two screws here for the card reader. Card reader USB goes over here. Notice how I've put it under a wire to keep it from coming loose. There's a fan cable here. There are a lot of wires here, but this is the front panel. This is the front panel, and there's a system fan underneath the optical drive here. There's a system fan by the main CPU fan connector here. Notice that I've tied it up. Um, that one is also kind of in this zip tie bundle here to keep the wires from getting into the fans. Remember, you really don't want your wires to get into your fans. That's going to cause all kinds of really ugly problems if it manages to get in there. Plus, it'll scare the ever-living crap out of whoever it happens to. Front panel audio. We've got a pair of front USB headers. One of them goes to the actual USB 2 stuff on the front. The other one goes to the card reader that I installed, which I'll show you in a minute. We have our drive bracket here. We've got hard drive, solid state drive. Solid state drive goes down here to SATA 1, hard drive SATA 2. The optical drive comes down to SATA 3, and there are five that aren't used. And power going to everything. Did I omit anything? Uh, I don't think so. Um, oh yeah, I've got USB 3 right here. There is one USB 3 connector. Now, let me show you some stuff about the front of these cases real fast. A lot of these cases have a front panel that can be removed by pulling on the bottom. Do you see this hole? And you pull on the bottom and drop it off the desk like I just did. Because clearly that's good for it. Now it won't hurt anything. <clears throat> so you take the front panel off and I took out these knockouts. I give the customer their knockouts because if they ever take, say, the optical drive or card reader out, they can put the knockouts back in. These knockouts were held by a couple of clips. And you put this back whenever it's done. Notice how this particular front panel, it has buttons and holes, but no actual wires. All the wires go to this part. How do you put these back on? Well. The type of front panel you can violently rip off, you can violently reapply. There's your front panel. You've got USB 3, USB 2, microphone, headphone, power, reset. That's probably a power light or a reset. No, that power light's in the button. The hard drive light is there. Optical drive. This is the card reader that I installed. When you install these, your main goal is to make sure that they are flush and that the screws keep them that way. See, that's not going anywhere. Okay. So you see how one of these goes together. Um, you'll notice I've zip tied this. I also have another zip tie bundle here. I don't want anything to get into this fan. I don't want power wires just flopping loose. Um, this four pin connector was a concern. I was able to spiral it around and it's not going to fall into anything. The tension of this zip tie and this thick wire will keep it from being a problem. Bundled that wire. Yeah, uh, that's it. This computer is fully assembled. Now we just put the side panel back on, apply our license stickers, information stickers, and install our software. 
This computer I am setting up with a solid state primary and a hard drive storage drive. What that will do is when the customer saves something to desktop or documents or any of those usual places, it will automatically kick over to the solid state. I'm sorry, it will automatically kick over to the X to the hard drive. I just realized that these holes don't quite line up the way that I want them to. There. <laughs> okay. Unexpected problem. Unexpected problem with easy solution. <clears throat> In this bag, there are rubber shock mounts because this thing actually has room for even more drives if you mount them with these rubber mounts. But this is a security connector that you can use basically to lock your PC up and keep people from being able to steal it easily. Now, I hate these things. I absolutely hate them. They are the worst things ever. But in this instance, they just might save us. So what we've got going on here is we need to find a screw that will go in it. I think that's fine thread, so let's just get this fine thread screw. But what I'm doing here is I don't like these security tabs, but the case is ever so slightly off. And since it doesn't make a good connection there, I can set this security tab up. And if I align it just right, it will guide the case into position. <laughs> if I align it just right, good luck getting it to align just right. Now, uh, you can kind of see the problem. There's some tension in that. And when you get the little flaps to lock and slide it, it still doesn't want to go. So by using this security tab here, it will kind of hold the case up, guides it up. Now, that thumb screw that wouldn't even go in earlier, I can see the hole, and it goes in cleanly, and I don't have to warp it just to get it to go in. All right. Well, I have to get this thing ready. Um, I'm out of time today, so I hope you've enjoyed watching this, and I hope that we'll see you in my next video. Um, do all the usual pressing of the buttons on the YouTubes. <sighs> wow. My memory card just ran out on the other camera. My life. What a great life. Time's up. Parting is such sweet sorrow.